A Nigeria's Business Facilitation Act of 2022 is a significant step towards improving the ease of doing business and attracting investments. By simplifying registration procedures, enhancing investors' protection, facilitating access to finance, and establishing special economic zones. This act aims to create a conducive environment for businesses to thrive. In this conversation, we will explore the content of the act, other issues, the reports that was presented yesterday in Abuja, its potential impact on businesses and overall economy. I have the right person in the house. She's joining from our Abuja studios. She's Dr. Jumoke Oduwali. She's a special advisor to the president on the ease of doing business and investments. Office of the Vice President. It's good to have you on the program. Dr. Oduwali, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, I, I, I like to start. Yes, I, I don't not really want to take you back, but let's look at Quebec in its entirety. A lot of work you've been doing here at the Secretariat. Uh, now, before we go to dig, delve deep into this report, give us updates on what's been happening around that space. I mean, your space with Quebec. Well, you know, Quebec was uh, constituted in 2016. And in the last seven years, we've worked on four primary pillars. We've worked on our regulatory intervention. We've had national action plans. We had the executive order one signed in 2017, which was codified as Business Facilitation Act 2022. So it's now legally binding, which is what we're going to talk about today. We've also had legislative interventions. We worked on the CAMA. We worked on a Credit Reporting Act. We worked on judiciary interventions. We've worked on small claims courts around the country. 13 states have small claims courts. And of course, our subnational intervention, which is a very robust uh, enterprise that we go, we've gone all around all the states on tour, but we're in partnership with the National Economic Council and the NGF and the World Bank to have a program that delivers reforms to states where businesses really reside. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, what we've done for the last six years. Strategic communication is one of our biggest pillars because we know that whatever we do, if small and medium-sized businesses are not aware of the reforms, whether it's from regulatory starting a business to NAFTA to paying taxes, trying to use automation to reduce the cost and time of doing business and to make sure that it's more transparent, websites are up to date, the costs of regulatory compliance is well known, um, to all the other interventions, over 180 reforms. That's a summary. Beautiful uh, stuff there. Now, let's now, I saw the top performers. I saw the likes of NCDM, BSON, uh, but can you take us through the criteria? How did you come up with this? A lot of work must have been put in here. So the executive order one, as I mentioned earlier, was signed in 2017. And so a year later, from 2018, we've been tracking empirically. We released our first report in 2018, and we've had uh, eight so far. Yesterday was the eighth that was released, and it's available on our website, businessmadeeasy.ng. So we released full-year reports, and we released half-year reports. This is a half-year report from January to June of 2023. It helps the ministries, departments, and agencies, the priority PEBEC ones that we work on, 53 of them, 54, um, were tracking those agencies that are business facing. So I think one, one kind of fell by the way, but 53 of them, I would say, have been consistent in submitting or in being tracked on their executive order one performance. And so they submit monthly reports to PEBEC uh, Secretariat and Servicom. This is coordinated by the Office of the Head of Service and also the SGF's office are all aware because there's a FEC directive that also goes with the report gov portal, which is you can get it, you can download the app from Apple Store or Google Play. There you can give reports, you can file complaints, you can give feedback. So that's the other side of the coin. We track their customer service, their, ser their adherence to service level agreements. And then we also track what private sector are saying about them in terms of reports and feedback. The idea is to improve transparency and efficiency of public service delivery to the private sector. So uh, we believe what gets measured gets done. We give out the half-year report so that agencies have an opportunity to ramp up 
if they haven't been submitting their reports. I mean, I could just show you any agency that doesn't submit their report kind of gets a red. And so the agencies that, that submit their reports get the green, depending on the percentage and the amber. So the more consistent you are cumulatively. So like I said, this is the eighth report, and it speaks to the diligence of the public and civil servants in these 53 ministries, departments, and agencies on submitting a monthly report with a rigorous methodology that says how you're adhering to timelines on transparency. Is your website up to date? Are you picking up your phone? Uh, the phone lines, are they current? Are you, is the information on your website accurate? If you have a change, is it updated? Are you responding to your customers? So it's on customer service. It's on adherence to your own service level agreements. We don't judge them on any criteria that they themselves did not say it takes five days to get this permit. So when they submit their monthly reports to us, they have to give us the names of some of their customers, their users, as submitted under the, under the intervention. And the team then calls some of them random checks to say, indeed, is this information correct? And then we've had situations when they say, oh, yes, that was fantastic. And sometimes they say, no, that never happened. And then we, we adjust their, their ranking. So some agencies have been consistent and are getting better and better. We also track the agencies that are most improved. I noticed like NOTAP, uh, FIRS, some of the agencies that are most improved in this particular intervention, NERC also. Some agencies like Nigeria Local Content Development Board have been very consistent over time in adhering to their own service level agreements. So it's just a way to make sure that the public and civil service are more efficient and more transparent. And then the report gov is the opportunity for private sector to file their complaints or their, their positive affirmations and to give us that triangulation. Hmm. It getting more interesting. But there continues to be a, a lingering bureaucratic and uh, I think management challenges. How are you reacting to this? So that is why we track so that the heads of agencies and the line ministers can also see. Yesterday, we went further than just releasing the report. We also had a sensitization uh, workshop yesterday, refreshing the teams on the methodology, why you're being tracked, why you're being scored low. If you're getting a zero, it's because you didn't submit your report or you didn't submit it on the last Friday of the month, as is the rule. Or we found out that some of the information you submitted was inaccurate. Um, so this is an opportunity for the heads of agencies to know how their teams are performing and for the line ministers to also know how the boots on the ground, how the officers are performing. Each agency has nominated a team, designated about, about five persons in a team. Some of them are dealing with submitting the monthly report, collating that data. Another uh, side of the team is responding to the tickets that are raised under reportgov.ng. The idea here is to make sure that MDAs uh, decide to use more and more automation. So the, the, the methodology rewards agencies, departments, and ministries that use automation to make things simpler for businesses. So if, if you have uh, an interactive portal where people can get a permit or a license or can lodge a complaint or, or use your services without any human contact, we really give that very high scores because we're trying to remove the rent-seeking opportunities. We're trying to put in efficiency. So if you can uh, upload your, your tax returns uh, overnight without having to go to any tax office, FIRS will get, will get points for that. So over time, the idea is to make sure that more and more ministries, departments, and agencies are leveraging automation technology and making sure that they're more efficient. When we started... Some of these MDAs did not have working phone numbers. They just put phone numbers there. And so when we go around and we call the phone numbers that they have, if their phone numbers are not working, if they're not being picked up by human beings, then automatically they're scoring a zero for that. So over time, as we continue to uh, familiarize and sensitize the MDAs, particularly the leadership, we believe that it's, we're getting more and more traction. And we're looking forward to more consequence management for airing agencies, as well as more recognition and commendation for agencies that have been consistently doing well. We do give them PEBEC awards. We write to them. 
we mentioned them, but it's always nice when we get the private sector testimonials speaking to indeed the efficiency of particular agencies. And yesterday we had a peer review. We got the agencies that have been consistent to speak to the other agencies. So you see that people say, oh, that's Nigeria, that's how it is. No, there's some agencies right in the same federal government that are paying attention and delivering excellent customer service. So that's also a, a, a challenge to the other agencies. Mm. I'm looking at the efficiency in the public service delivery, looking at this government's drive towards investment. We see the president, everywhere he goes to, talking about wants to attract investment, bring the money in. Uh, what is your outlook for the public service, for public service delivery in its entirety? Yeah, so this is funny. I was asked this very question yesterday at the Nigerian Economic Summit. So I've said that foreign investment, yes, we really need so much capital to come into the economy to deliver the amount of work we have to do. But our biggest chance at getting foreign investment is making sure that the domestic businesses, the businesses operating within Nigeria's borders, are comfortable. The business environment is effective, it's efficient, it's transparent, it's friendly. It's moving well for them. It's fast-paced. It's easy. When they are comfortable, they will be our biggest testimonials. They will tell others from all over the world that come to Nigeria. It's easy to do business here. You can register your business easily. You can get your permit, your land registration. You can pay your taxes. You can get your NAFTAC registration. You can get your son registration. All the things you need. If we cannot fix it for the businesses that are already here, it's going to be difficult to get more businesses to come in because they do market surveys, they ask questions, they speak to each other, they're in the same sectors. They're going to ask, if you are trying to leave Nigeria or if you are finding it difficult, if you are not reinvesting in Nigerian market, why should we bring in money? So our priority at the PEBEC is to focus on the business climate in Nigeria for the Nigerian companies operating in Nigeria. We want them to reinvest more. We want them to speak on our behalf. Because when government speaks, it says, yes, 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 government can say, come and invest in Nigeria. But when a fellow private sector says to any investor from around the world, come here, it's good, then you know that they're going to come. Mm. So, so, sounds uh, really, really good. Uh, Report.gov.ng. Uh, I want us to take us through the logging in a ticket and ticket processing flow. I'm interested in this. How does it really, how does it work? So report code, I think the first thing to do is just to download it. It's very easy. So when you download it, the, the, the interface that the public see is just very simple. You just have the drop box of agencies. If you want to make a complaint, maybe if something happened, we actually have physical kiosks at the airports. So if something happens, you want to lodge a complaint or you want to give a compliment, oh, my iPad, I forgot it. Three weeks later, I came. There it was. You can just log on from anywhere in the world. It's web-based or you can have the app. And you just go onto the, onto the um, site you want. You just go on to, this is the agency I want to, uh, it, there's a drop box you select. And then is it feedback or is it a complaint? then you put in your information and that's fine. If you're raising a ticket, I tried to uh, pay my, I tried to register a company and it didn't happen within 48 hours or it's hanging or I haven't gotten a response and it's, and it's been a week. And I said, okay, I want, to, I want you to help me intervene with CAC. What happens is that the public gets a ticket and you get a response that, your matter has been looked into. We've seen it's not a whistleblower app, so you have to put your name. You give us the details of what happened. In the PEBEC Secretariat, there's a clearinghouse that interfaces with the teams, the back end teams at all the MDAs that I mentioned. So CAC has its, its team. They were there at the, at the sensitization session yesterday. We went through it all again. The interface that the internal team sees is this is the ticket, this is the time it was raised, this is the issue. That team then has to work with their colleagues in the agency. So the CAC team will have to find out which department in CAC, what went wrong, what's going on. And then, so there's a lot of discussion at the back end. The, the team has to find out which agency, what was the problem? Was it insufficient documentation? Was it uh, 
overpayment, underpayment, duplicity, whatever it is, then the information has to come back and then the customer gets a resolution. Either this is, you need to bring extra information, extra documentation, or there was a mistake here, or we're sorry about that, we're going to correct this, or you'll hear from us shortly. Now, this process needed to be timed, so we actually got a FEC approval a few years ago for it to be a 72-hour timeline for agencies to work this whole process, because we know that sometimes, sometimes they even have to go to another agency to say, this uh, company was trying to register a, a business by guarantee. Part of it is through CAC. Another end of it is through Ministry of Justice. We need to contact another agency. So they have service level agreements, intergovernmental, and that's the importance of communication and one government. So then 72 hours, you're supposed to respond with this is the issue and this is what we're going to do about it. It may or may not be that you can solve it. If you can solve it within 72 hours, fine. If you can't, you need to tell the customer what exactly is going on. If you don't meet that 72 hours, then you're, you're getting into your red zone. If you manage to fix the ticket in the end, you solve the problem, but it was longer than 72 hours, your marks are deducted, but you still get some marks. If you never solved the problem, you're getting a zero. So the report is quite robust, and all the methodology of how the agencies are measured, is all written in there. Uh, I urge uh, MDAs, the, the heads of agency, the agency um, staff themselves to familiarize themselves, and, and private sector really, to take advantage of the opportunity. Sometimes the reforms are there, but private sector don't know about it, which is why we come on shows like this to tell private sector, report.gov.ng, try it, try the app, uh, try the tickets. We do have testimonials of people who have said, this has worked for me. I didn't know anybody. I just filled the app and I got a resolution. That's one of the biggest testimonials that any agency can get and that the PEBEC can get, that you didn't need to know anyone. You just downloaded an app. You had a problem. You put in the information. You got a response and you got a resolution. And that's where we're aiming for transparency and efficiency of public service delivery. We'll keep a tab on you and keep following up on activities of PEBEC, and we hope to have you in to discuss more uh, moving on. Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, special advisor to the president on the ease of doing business and investment, office of the vice president. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate this. You're welcome. Thank you.